So several of you have asked me very simply, how does your aquaponics system work? Well, today's the day we answer that question and I wanna give you guys an in-depth look at each component of our system from start to finish. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode from New Agrarian on YouTube, where we're all about aquaponics, hydroponics, and agriculture. As promised, I wanna give you guys a tour of our system this year from beginning to end. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll answer them when I can. Let's get into it. So water starts in our fish tanks here and we have six 300 gallon polyethylene tanks. Water exits all these tanks through the use of a solids lifting overflow, which I have a whole nother video on, so make sure you check that out. We also have these tanks lifted up on cinder blocks, one for the plumbing and two just to help us utilize gravity a little bit more effectively throughout our system. We've grown a lot of different species of fish in these tanks, including tilapia, catfish, koi, bass, and I'm always looking to experiment with different things, but this is where our water starts. Let's keep moving. So after the water exits the fish tanks through the solids lifting overflows, it goes into these cone bottom settling tanks. Every two fish tanks get one cone bottom settling tank. These are radial flow settlers. I did a video on those as well, so make sure you check that out. But most of the solid particles are gonna get trapped in these cone bottom settlers. So after the water gravity feeds out of the cone bottom settling tanks, it goes into this makeshift clarifier. This is actually an old media bed that we converted into a clarifier. Yes, you can use a media bed to do just that, but the problem is the media bed becomes very difficult to clean. So as you can see, the water exits the settling tank and enters on the outside of this media. This is called Matala Media. I'll put the link for this product in the description below. It's basically these fine mesh sheets. Once they become clogged with particles, we take them outside and just spray them off. Works really well for collecting small particles. After it goes through the Matala media, it has to go through these bags of expanded clay pebbles. This setup does a pretty good job of removing small particles. In my opinion, one of the most tricky parts of home aquaponics is establishing a good clarifier. It's not the end of the world if this thing doesn't work perfectly, but it just saves you headaches down the line from particles getting into your deep water culture bed and other containers in your system. There's multiple drains on this clarifier to keep up with the large amount of water flow. Let's keep going. So after the clarifier, water drains into this biofilter slash degassing tank. We've got a few mesh bags in here that hold calmness media for bacteria. We also threw in a couple clay pebbles in those bags just because they were extra and they were laying around. This is obviously a container to help remove nitrogenous chemicals as well as harmful gases like carbon dioxide, hydrogen sulfide, things from decomposition. Not necessary in your aquaponics system, but I think it definitely helps with water quality. After the biofilter, it's going to go into our first deep water culture bed. This bed is is eight feet wide by 32 feet long, and it holds eight plant raft beds, each one capable of holding 60 plus plants for a total of about 500 plants able to be grown in this bed at a time. This bed combined with the plant roots could also be used as a biofilter because of the aeration that is provided, but I like to have a separate container for both just because I like to increase the water volume. You could also add another clarifier right here where the water comes into this bed if you wanted. These beds, we grow a lot of different stuff, including various types of lettuce. We've got some peppers here, kale, basil, bok choy, and we've done a lot of other cool stuff too. Let's keep going. So once the water reaches the end of this deep water culture bed, it overflows through this pipe into here. These are both connected with bulkhead fittings. This bed is only slightly lower than this one. These beds, because they're connected this way, are gonna wanna be the same height, but whatever the height of this drain is, is the height that this bed will want to be at. So basically what I'm saying is if this drain is higher than this, this bed's gonna overflow. You can also see we put this step over this so guests don't trip and it's much safer. This second deep water culture bed is four feet wide and 32 feet long. I also just posted a video a month or two ago on how to build this at home. So once the water reaches the end of this deep water culture bed, a one half horsepower pump actually moves it underneath both beds to that bead filter right there. Let's take a look at the pump and plumbing setup. We run pipes for both the airline for this deep water culture bed, 
and the water return line under that step right there. So here's the pump we use. This is a sweet water one half horsepower pump. I've been running this thing continuously for two years now. These are great pumps. The inlet pipe you can see right here actually is plumbed into the bottom of the bed. I think that that's a good thing to do. That way the pump doesn't have to prime itself. It's just automatically primed with gravity. We also put this net here in front of the pump inlet just to prevent roots or any obstructions from getting in there and clogging it. The outlet pipe, like I said, comes here, underneath the bed, and over to the bead filter. Let's go take a look. So the water comes underneath both beds, comes up here, and enters the bead filter right here. The bead filter is actually a pretty sweet piece of equipment. Any particles that are left at the end of your system are gonna get trapped in here. You do have to clean this thing once every couple of weeks, once the PSI starts to get a little bit high. But for a couple hundred dollars, this thing I think is pretty worth it. You can also see the airline here that runs along the side of both beds. All the plumbing for the water lines and air lines are along this wall. So this is the bead filter waistline. We used to have a UV sterilizer right here. I had to take it out because the gaskets were getting old and I have to repair it, but I didn't have time to repair it with the fish in the system, so I had to just take it out entirely. So the entire last year I ran the UV sterilizer and the entire this year I'll be running it without the UV sterilizer. So I'll be able to form an opinion on whether or not the UV sterilizer actually makes much of a difference. Personally, I liked having it. So I'm looking to get it back in here as soon as I can. I also did a UV sterilizer video too. So the water return from the bead filter would run along the wall and then it would come into the side of these fish tanks along with the air line. So each fish tank has an air line and a water return line plumbed up the side of it and drilled through the side of it. Anything in the top of the fish tanks is going to interrupt the ability to put a lid on these things. These are all PVC sheet lids. Each of these PVC sheets cost me about $85 prior to COVID. Not sure what they cost now. They are expensive. They are worth the money though. Nets are a pain in the butt. Like I said in the beginning, these tanks all run with the use of a solids lifting overflow. The tanks are also connected on the bottom with a gate valve here. Easy to open, easy to close. You're not reaching your hand in anything. Ball valves are a nightmare for that. Definitely invest in some gate valves. Something else I want to point out is both of these deep water culture beds are aerated by this regenerative blower, which I already did a video on. Make sure you check that out. You can see we ran air lines along the sides of both deep water culture beds. Every line has its own ball valve, which comes in handy when it comes to cleaning these out. The air that you put into these beds will not only oxygenate plant roots, but this will act as an entire large biofilter and degassing tank. Regenerative blower must have, especially if you're a commercial aquaponics grower. So that's it guys, nothing too crazy with this aquaponics system, but it does allow us to produce a lot of food. I do update this system at least once per year, so if you want to see future upgrades on this system, definitely hit the subscribe button and I'll post some on my YouTube channel. Hope you guys use some information from this video in your own systems. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching guys.